Hi. What is up, Internet world, and welcome back to Accelerate. I'm Mike, he's Ian, and today we bring you the long Ford F-250. I'm in the 2023 Ford F-250 XL. Now there's four different engines you can get, two gas and two diesel. This is the base variant. This is a 6.8 liter. Yep, you heard me correctly. A 6.8 liter that makes 405 horsepower and 445 pound-feet of torque. Then there's a larger V8. It's a 7.3 liter V8. Whew. 7.3 crazy that makes 430 horsepower and 485 pound feet of torque then there's two diesels a regular base one and a high output anyways this is a 6.8 liter 405 horsepower 445 pound feet of torque i will put my draggy on to see how fast i can get this puppy to be and voila let's pump it up and i am in slippery roads because it's raining get some power here a bit of brake boost and go Whoa. Thing falls. This thing rips. What the heck? 6.96. What? Seriously? What on earth? Everything just flew out of this dash. My cell phone, my keys, my man purse. Yep, man purse. It all flew out. That was really quick. I'm not expecting that at all. It's looking like nine seconds in the sled, but I don't ever pin cars. <laughs> I'm like, the gas is so expensive. Okay, put the ground, try that again. Oh my God. This thing rips. Oh my God. 6.78. What? This thing is quick. I'm super excited to bring the all new 2023 Ford F-250 Super Dutty. Now it's super important because this is a huge, huge seller for Ford. The F-150 obviously is their king, but this is their workhorse. Every contractor on the planet wants to get their hands on one of these bad boys. And it's important for us to get the base one first because I wanna see what you can get for the money. So this is the XL version with a bunch of packages. The first one is right here, STX. And then the next one is FX4, which includes some skid plates, but it's dressed in white, just like me. So let's get into it. So there's a bunch of different trim levels you can buy in the F250, starting off with this, the XL. Then you have the XLT. Then you have the Lariat that everybody knows. After that, you have the King Ranch, which always has the weirdest interiors. Then you have the most confusing trim level on the planet, which should be the top. And that is the. Platinum, which I believe should be the top, but no, Ford likes to make it complicated like all their options and makes the Limited their top model. And of course, to make things more confusing in typical Ford fashion, you can add specialty packages to each vehicle. So in this specific case, this XL does have the STX package and the FX4 package that really just includes skid plates. So what is F-250's cost? Well, if you buy it in the regular cab, it has a starting price of around $58,500. If you bought it in the extended cab, which is now called the Super Cab, it costs around $61,500. And if you bought it in the full or crew cab, it has a starting price of around $63,500. But that's not it. That's the bottom of the barrel. If you load it all the way up in a big boy with all the toys in the Limited, it starts around 120 grand. That is a lot of dough, but I guarantee you most of the sales will be in the upper brackets here in Canada. To the front of the all new F-250 Super Dutty, you get seven different grille designs, which is crazy, but let's focus on the headlights first. They have a C-clamp design with quad headlights. Yep, I kid you not. These guys, one, two, three, four are for the headlights, and the inside ones, one, two, three, four, are for the high beams. Of course, your signals are inside right here, but this is a huge area to have headlights. This is the biggest headlight I've ever seen when you pack it all together. But what's even bigger is this Ford logo. This is the largest Ford logo Ford has ever made. 
don't quote me on that, but legitimately, this is the biggest thing I've ever seen. Nonetheless, you've got seven different grills, as I mentioned. This one is the XTX. It's all black. There is a camera up front there, but the most important piece Ford says is everything about this grill is functional. As you can see here and on the other side, it has air flowing all the way through and out the side fenders. Pretty cool Ford. Now, of course, you have two big tow hooks there, and then on the bottom, you have this work bumper, which is pretty standard. To the side of the F-250. Now you'd like to know that Ford is the only brand out there that makes an aluminum cab and an aluminum bed. Everybody else is not aluminum. Now if we focus on the wheels here, this has the STX package, so you get 18s. However, you can get an F-250 in 17s, 18s, and 20s. But the improvement I see when looking at this massive thigh gap is this. Underneath you have all carpet. There is no plastic. Thumbs up. Now, as far as colors go, you can get a whole bunch of colors in your F-250, starting off with Oxford White, which is what this one is. Then you get Race Red, Gray, Agate Black, Antimatter Blue, and Carbonized Gray again. Now, as we move along into the fender here, you have a functional side vent. It's supposed to reduce air pressure inside the engine bay. You have the STX badging up there, and then you have this piano black trim that goes from top to bottom with the F250. Now, generally it's in chrome, so I like the fact that it's all black there. Now, when I move along, I have these massive, massive side mirrors. I haven't found a button inside that widens it or extends it out when you're towing. I just couldn't find it for some reason. If you know this truck better than I do, comment below and let me know, but I could not find it. Now moving along here, you have the side step. Here in Canada, it costs $600 for that option and I always recommend to buy it because this thing is so high off the ground. That's it for the cab, pretty straightforward stuff. Let's focus on the bed. Now there's a few changes I've noticed. I've always seen this on GMs, but for Ford, I've never really seen it, so it's likely new, this side step. Now I'm five foot nine, it's sort of between my knee and my hip on where it is because I can't reach anything inside the bed without getting my whole front end dirty. So this is how you do it. You put your leg in, you step up. Pretty cool that I can grab stuff in the front of the bed. Now, speaking of beds, you get this. It's so complicated, but you get the long bed, which is eight feet. That's standard when you buy the one door version aka two doors. If you want the extra door, well, you have the smaller bed, which is this, 6.75 feet. Yes, you get the smaller bed when you have the extra door, but you can option it out and get the eight foot bed on all three trims. To the back of the all new Super Dutty. As I walk past the 6.75 foot bed, I can tell you this is stamped in Super Dutty. Now, thank God the badge is not as big as the front. That thing is massive. So let's start at the top here. You do have your camera, of course, your little pulley. Is this soft close or soft open? Let's hear it. Actually, it sort of looks like the Hummer for some weird reason with these boxy taillights. Anyways, moving down from there, of course, you have your typical little plugins for your boat and your jet ski and your trailer, all that hides there. It's interesting though that everything in this truck is LED with the exception of the lighting that lights up your license plate. This thing is not LED, it is amber. They're obviously using some old parts here. Nonetheless, let's talk about everybody's biggest pet peeve when it comes to YouTubers and journalists talking about this, towing. Now, let's get this straight. If you got the regular cab, the maximum you could tow is 20,000 pounds. Comment below if I'm wrong. We need all the comments we can get. But this thing, super dotty and all, in its crew cab or its super cab fashion, it tows 22,000 pounds at most. Because obviously you have four different engines, so it's crazy the amount of different pieces this thing can tow. But 22,000 pounds is a ton. So anything you're gonna tow that's 20,000 pounds, you obviously know what type of truck you're buying and what you can tow. It's guys like me that have no idea what they're doing. We're like, this thing is a truck, it can tow anything. Now walking into the back of my Super Duty, again on the sides I do have the steps, and on this one I do also have steps at the edge of the bed. It's right here on both sides and I can easily get into the bed, grab what I want, and jump back out of it. Again, this is a very, very high truck. 
You gotta push this out, you gotta pull it. This is exactly the same as the F-150, by the way. It folds down, again, you've got this little step here, you step into it. There's still a lot of movement, but hey, it works and you can get into it. Now, if I needed a handle, you have this little yellow thing I can pull, and I sort of have a bar, and I can get into it. It even numbers it for you. This one says two, pretty straightforward. I get into it, and obviously, voila, I'm in my 6.7 foot bed. Now, when I'm in here, it tells me exactly how many cubic yards I can carry. 2.5 cubic yards of space I can put into my bed of my F-250. But how about tying things down? Well, first you need light. And light is done by pushing this button. I push this button, I have light on both sides. It illuminates the back of this bed. And I do have four seriously mean tie downs. One, two, three, and four. They are all keyed so I could remove them. There are also D-rings, two of them. One here and one here. You obviously can't see it from that angle, but I can see it standing here. But the most important piece they've carried over from the F-150 is this Pro Power on board. It powers two kilowatts of stuff. Voila, there it is. You've got two outlet plugs. Back seat of the F-250. Now in recent years, people are not buying minivans anymore. Husbands are actually buying trucks or single dads like me. We like trucks because there's a lot of room in the back. And when you have room in the back, the kids are happy because they can destroy what they want because this is a work truck. So let's start with the door panel, Mr. Work Truck. You've got lots of space for these guys. You have one up here, whoopsie daisy. You've got one down here and one next to it. So it's three different compartments for your water. Plus you have three levels in this door panel to store. Again, one for the water, one for snacks, and one on the bottom for two bottles of water and a bunch of snacks. The second portion of it is check out the design of these seats. Look how these seats go up. Now obviously all trucks will do this. When I pull it, this goes up fairly straightforward, but it's how the back pivots makes a difference. And why this is important is because every kid that sits in the back of an F-250 or something this size will always complain about how straight these backrests are. They're always 90 degrees. Even when you're driving, you see a bunch of workers in the back of a truck, they're always sitting straight up and they're hating their lives. This way you can hate your life, but maybe not as much because look at this. When I pull this handle, watch how these seats straighten up like how they used to be. And as I drop this, you can see how they pan out from the bottom and give you a little bit more back support and a little bit more luxurious feeling. Now let's jump into the back here and you can see, of course, I got a ton of room. Well, of course, look how big this thing is. But as I'm sitting here, I'm five foot nine, and look how much headroom I have. Enough for somebody that's six foot four, six foot five, easily. As far as leg room, man, you can be like seven feet. It's all good. As far as seat, like comfort feels, it feels pretty good. It doesn't feel bad at all. Again, that bottom back support is really good. Soft, I'm pushing back on it feels really good. As far as visibility for the driver or somebody in the back here to grab something from the back, it now does have a power sliding rear glass. Thumbs up. As far as connectivity and more cup holders, in the center console here I have two USB-Cs, one cigarette plug I can plug in, and of course when I pull this down I have two more cup holders. Now these cup holders are pretty big. They're for something more than a water bottle. A water bottle will not stay in here, it'll come up pretty easily. This is more for maybe just a, a wider, say like a construction job site bottle per se. How about vents? That's something I don't see in the back here. There are no vents whatsoever. Maybe underneath the floor, hmm. Yeah, nope, uh, maybe, maybe not. I can't really see them. They're not basically obvious. So in the front, you'd probably have to jack up your AC for the people back here. Mike. Oh, hey, you know what I did notice? In the back here, it has a flat floor. Yep, there's no bump out. It's completely flat so the people in the back can actually put their feet, especially the one in the middle, per se. Now, it is a six passenger, three in the back, three in the front. And the reason why this is important is because these seats here lie completely flat so you can sleep while everybody else has to sit upright. You can sleep and enjoy your life. 
Nonetheless, when I pull this back up and I'm eating and I'm hungry, I have this, a revised center console. Check this out. I push this button, I can slide it backwards and forwards. I have two cup holders here, and when I slide it forward, I have two more cup holders, a little bit of storage, and a space for like 15 cell phones stacked up. But I can also eat, or I can be on my laptop here. I have this little toggle I can push, and it slides and it pivots towards me and I can type my life away or I can eat my french fries, dip it in my ketchup and mayo mixed together. I can't believe that's actually for sale because I used to have forever. Ketchup and mayo mixed together is the best thing in the world and it's all gonna start right here on this little cutout of my F-250. I'm gonna put ketchup here, I'm gonna put mayo here and in the middle they're gonna meet, make fancy love and then put my ketchup in my french fries and my mayo in my mouth. Now, if we start off with the door panel here, you have three levels of storage. On the bottom, you can fit like four water bottles and a bunch of chips. On the second level, it's for more smaller items like Kit Kats, of course, Snickers, and little aero bars. At the top, you can fit one thing, and that is your hand to open and close the door. Some people actually put a cell phone there as storage. It's pretty unique, but yep, a cell phone can fit right here in the door handle. Anyways, you have automatic windows on the front two doors only. The backs are manual. Of course, you can lock and unlock your doors. Pretty straightforward forward panel that's been around for a long time, especially the top section of it. When I move into the dash, it's a little bit more squared off, but nothing changing except for just big old analog dials. Of course, at the top you have your oil, you have your water coolant, how much gas you have, and then the transmission temperature. Moving down from there, you have your typical Ford stuff. You can press this button and light up the bed. You can put your automatic lights, your, of course, your daylight running lights, and then one more button, and that is to put on your Pro Power onboard that shows you right on this screen. I hit it, voila, it says vehicle must be running to supply power to the outlets. Pretty cool that you can press this button and put it on and off. Moving down from there, of course, there's a simple button. You pull it and it releases your parking brake. Up next is how you shift gears and it's done right here. You have an M for manual mode that you can toggle up and down through 10 different gears because again, of course, this is a 10 speed transmission, but that's not important. The most important is wireless CarPlay. Voila, we are on Ian's screen right there. Above that, I have a button. This does have the 360 camera option because this is an STX. That is your visuals, pretty poor, but it beeps and that's really all that matters. To the right of that, you have your four ways, of course, your stability program, traction and hill descent. I like that. Underneath it, you have a little bit more storage where you put some coins or maybe your cell phone if it is an iPhone 7 or 8. Moving down from there is pretty typical Ford, nothing new here. You have knobs for your volume, your tune, your fan speed, and of course your temperature. It is not dual climate control, it is single climate control. Of course, you're venting left, right, up, down, pretty straightforward stuff. On this side here, this is where I can select my two-wheel drive, my four-wheel high, my rear locking differential, my four low, and my different drive modes by turning this little button. And as I turn this button, my drive modes are eco, tow, normal, slippery roads, off-road, and voila, I get four of them. Now underneath that, I have a USB-C, a USB, a 12-volt plug, and then more storage on the bottom to hold everybody else's cell phone and some coins. Now again, this is a six-passenger. Now when I lift this up, voila, there you have it, more space, and that person has access to these two plugs along with the passenger. This is for another 12-volt plug, and then a full plug for my Pro power on board right there. Again, if you forgot, there's a switch or button here I can push to activate that plug. Now, it does have this, which is pretty typical. Typical? Yeah. It's pretty typical. Yeah, pretty typical. <laughs> Now it does have this, which is pretty typical of a truck this size, but it has one extra feature when I'm putting my hands down here, and that is this little button. I push it, and voila, I have more space here under the sixth passenger, or the center console. Lots of space, good touch, I like it. This is where you can put all your cash on your pickup night runs. Last but not least is the passenger side storage. Pretty typical stuff. I've got lots of space there. It says Ford in the back and it says Super Duty right here. But there's one extra piece I can tell you about and that is the passenger side airbag. Now that activates automatically in most cars, but in this Ford, you can deactivate it by putting your key in here and turning it. You can put it on or off right there with the key in your hand. So you can deactivate the airbag. Now this is a whopping eight inch screen. However, it does have wireless CarPlay. And again, this is an XL. So we want to show you guys what an XL brings to the table. 
Wireless CarPlay is all people are gonna use. Now, if you're not gonna do that, you have the Sync 4, so of course you have Bluetooth as well. Now, the only important part on this eight inch screen really is the trailering feature, and it shows it right here. You hit the Features button, you have your Driver Assistance Pro Power on board. It tells you how much power you're drawing, but that's not really the point. Even if you have the generator mode on, I think the most important piece on this Sync 4 screen is the towing. The towing is important because you can add a trailer and you can have your trailer sway control on. Most people are gonna use that, especially especially when you're towing something really heavy, which is what this thing is designed to do. This thing is quick. It's light, I guess, because the aluminum, but man, this thing is quick. I was like, how am I gonna review this? Like, it drives like every other big truck, but this is actually softer. The suspension is soft to drive on this. The steering is very light. It's not exactly direct, but this is a whopping F-250, so I don't expect it to be. But I think we want to know, really, if you're buying one, what does it compare against? So say from the Chevys, obviously the Rams, how does this compete or compare against? I find those ones are stiffer. This is definitely softer. Ford have always been softer, in my opinion. The ride, it's not exactly stiff. It's soft, it's comfortable. They've got these soft seats. It's just softer all around. I find the tech, you know, this is a base one, it's just very plain. There's no point in reinventing the wheel when it sells so well, what's the point? They just keep it all the same. Of course, I'm gonna update the update the outside, but inside, it's kind of bland. It's the same old, same old, this is durable. You know, I talked about it the interior already, so I don't wanna dig into that, but it's just an F-250. It would feel, this would feel like a 1998 or a 2018 or a 2028, for that matter. They're not gonna change it, they sell, they don't care. They'll just make the outside a little bit different so that people can be like, this is my new truck. Check out the outside. They'll check out the lights. That's all they're gonna talk about. This is all the same. The steering wheel looks the same. The eight racks the same. This is the same. All kind of the same. Just some adaptability pieces. But you know, else is the same. But it rips. It rips. It rips. It's quick. It's crazy to think. Look at this power. What? It's Okay, so it's fast, it's light. Does it get tossed around? A little bit. It is just a little bit too light for itself. I feel like the wind will overpower this because it is light. It, the wind is just gonna whip it around like it's nobody's business, and that's probably the downfall of it. It's more comfortable than its competitors, in my opinion, but it's gonna get tossed around. That's the biggest takeaway I think that one should know when buying one of these things. Again, I don't like to pin it because I can see the gas move. It is a 6.8 after all. Obviously, I get more excited when I drive one that's fully loaded, and we're gonna get one. Of course, I can talk about the upgraded Bang & Olufsen. It's crazy, it got 18 speakers, amazing. It has all the good stuff. This is completely based. So hey, what can I say? Except for it's durable, usable, softer, has all the toys that all your boys want, and all the guys that are gonna be working in it, has all those pieces, has the new front headlights, has the step on the side so you can get in. Just more improvements. Flat floor in the back, seats that fold completely flat, all that makes a difference. So yes, there are some upgrades and updates, but they're not gonna change it, ever, unless they stop selling. So that's my review of the 2023 Ford F-250. Not a whole lot going on, but there will be more when we get the Limited. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and do so. We are on the race to a million, and the closer we can get to that number, the more cars we will get at a faster rate. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support, and we'll catch you on the next one.